Hi, I'm Chris Kepler, and welcome to Does This Happen to You? I'm an actor, voice actor, audiobook narrator, and writer. I love telling and sharing stories about the strange experiences my friends and I have while doing mundane things like grocery shopping. That's why this podcast features funny stories from fantastic writers about our daily anomalies, a micro audiobook about life and befuddlement just for you. Our story this week is from Misty Ray, who you'll find on Medium.com. And here is How Practicing Law Changed My View of Humanity. Now I just know too much. I just love stories that make you think. And thinking is a tough thing to do when it's 38 freaking degrees outside. For my American friends, that's 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm in northern Ontario, Canada. Northern. Let me say that again. Northern! I moved up here precisely to escape the heat. Damn, that worked out great. Anyway, I finally got around to my daily reading and stumbled on an article by Courtney Capone about how working as a vet tech changed her view of humanity. It's a great story. Do check it out. It's much more dramatic than mine will be. That said, practicing law was an education that really opened my eyes to how many people operate, and it wasn't pretty. I went into my dream career with all the cockeyed optimism anyone does after slogging through two university degrees. And for me, it was even sweeter. I came to law late. I graduated in my late 30s. I had three kids. I worked. I worked a lot of shit jobs for shit pay. Being able to join the ranks of the well-paid and highly respected, whee! And for a while, it was a rush. I initially got hired at the largest and most prestigious law firm in my area. And then it wasn't. I became very disillusioned over time about the practice and about humanity. Here's what I learned about humanity. If you let yourself be used, you'll be used. I was an eager beaver. I was so willing to prove myself. Call it imposter syndrome. Call it insecurity. But I was ready, willing, and able to show I could do it all that I got to do it all. I quickly became the go-to. I was the one that could be counted on to work 120 hours a week and make magic happen. I was the one that could be relied upon to spend sleepless nights researching and writing memos and briefs. It bought me into a lot of great cases. It also bought me a breakdown. My bad. I should have learned to say no. But everyone was well aware of my billable hours and nobody said shit. Also, my race was fun. I was trotted out as the diversity hire. I wasn't just old, but I wasn't white. I had me a black daddy. Such a progressive profession. I was just black enough to be acceptable, which, as you can plainly see, is not at all, but super white looking for their comfort. Across the span of my career with various firms, I got to go to all the parties. I got to go on all the trips. Lucky, lucky me. I was a showpiece that actually had a mind. If my race wasn't brought up, my looks were. Wear something short and tight. I was told that more than once. Sage advice from those that came before me. Funny thing, it works. You go into a discovery, deposition in the U.S., wearing a cute, form-fitting, shortish dress with your hair down and smile sweet. Well, that trucker that claims to be super hurt all of a sudden sings like the proverbial canary. What I learned about people from this was just what I said. You'll be used as much as you allow yourself to be used. I was basically a whore, an educated one, but my mind, body, and ethnicity were all for sale. At least a prostitute is only selling her body, just saying. People lie, a lot. 
Yeah, people are full of shit. That's the lesson here. When you hire a lawyer, there's supposed to be some trust. But more often than not, a client would try to bullshit me. They may lie to my face. They may try to hide documents I already know exist. But yeah, they lie. Criminals versus respectable. I worked at a few firms after leaving the big one. I never wanted to do criminal law, but I ended up doing some. And you know what's crazy? I prefer the criminals. Well, alleged criminals. Why? First, a seasoned individual who is well acquainted with the legal system knows the value of a good lawyer. There's no problem getting paid. They know the score. It's a stark contrast from the so-called business person who nickels and dimes everything, rages about fees, etc. Second, every single person I've represented in a criminal context has been extremely open and honest with me. If they did it, they'll say so. If they didn't, and they think they didn't because X, Y, or Z happened, they say so. They've also been the most humble, engaging, and interesting people I've met. Smoke and mirrors. In law, everyone's a poser, at least in my experience. I'm sure there are exceptions, but I never got to meet them. It's all about the look, the right house, in the right area, the right car, being seen in the right places. I don't care about those things. I have a shit van. I call her Bernice. She's old and ugly. She gets me where I need to be. I don't go out on the town, so I'm not seen anywhere, except the dog park. All this has made me realize that most people are generally insecure and seeking validation. If they need to do that on someone else's back, they will. They'll lie to you if it suits their purpose. It's also made me realize that often it's not the kid that got picked up for shoplifting you need to look out for. It's the high-powered plant manager in a suit who wants to skirt the environmental regulations and dump more cancer-causing crap into your water. I'm grateful for the lessons my legal career taught me. First, just because you can afford a nice suit, it doesn't mean you're a decent person. Second, I can smell bullshit from about 50 miles. I know a liar when they start talking, and I got no damn time for it. I also found my strength. I'm not the lawyer Barbie to be trotted out. I'm not the poor single mother from a poor black daddy. I'm more than that. I am all those things, but I'm also brilliant, beautiful, and worth more than an invite based on those things. I bring more to the table. But fuck it, I have my own table now. It's no wonder I prefer dogs and cats. Thanks so much for listening. If you enjoyed the story, let me know and share it with your friends. Follow me at Chris KK Aria on Twitter or Chris K. Kepler on Facebook. Or check out my website, www.chriskepler.com.